When Google dropped its first Pixel smartphone last year, I was not impressed. I dogged it for its lack of waterproofing, its derivative design, and for having a custom launcher when I expected pure stock Android. But then an important thing happened. I used the Pixel, and in short order, its instantaneous responsiveness ruined me for every other Android phone out there. Well, today in San Francisco, Google announced a couple successors to those original Pixels. These correct some of their predecessors' shortcomings, and they introduce a couple more. So why should you care about them? Because they're probably about to make an even bigger splash than their forerunners did. I'm Michael Fisher, and I went hands-on with the Pixel 2, Pixel 2 XL, and the new Pixel Book. This is a Mr. Mobile First Look. On paper, there are few surprises here. These are sequels to top-tier smartphones, so they've got the requisite high-end specs from the Snapdragon 835 on down the line. Google took a swipe at Apple by claiming that both of these have basically the same feature set, unlike the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus, but take that with a grain of salt. The larger Pixel 2 XL has a 30% bigger battery and a display that's an inch larger on the diagonal. The XL's display is also better. It's Quad HD instead of Full HD, it covers more of the DCI-P3 color gamut, and here's the polarizing bit, its aspect ratio is the stretched 18 by 9 instead of the smaller phone's 16 by 9. Personally, I love a narrower phone, and I also prefer the rounded corners and reduced bezels of the big guy. But what I think really won me over was that Panda paint job, which is only available on the 2XL. Sadly, this is as special as the color gets. If you want a paint job more striking than this, you're stuck with the aptly named Kinda Blue, which, yeah, pales in comparison to last year's Really Blue. But to Google's credit, almost everything else is common across the two sizes of device. The camera is probably the most important point. Last year's Pixel had one of the very best phone cameras on the market, and this year's improves on it with optical image stabilization, which Google says will work together with electronic stabilization to smooth out video. I'm a little thrown by the decision to reduce pixel size on the sensor, but the aperture is bigger this year, and to be honest, Google is relying so much on computational photography, it's impossible to tell how well this will perform until I take it out in the real world. No, I don't care about DxO mark scores. I'm especially eager to see how well the Pixel 2's portrait mode works. Not because I take a lot of portraits, but because it doesn't require a second camera to do that crazy background defocusing thing. This is claimed to work on the selfie shooter as well. Both of these phones are easy to hold on to, with a hybrid coating on the aluminum bodies that almost makes them feel... Plasticky isn't quite right, because they don't seem cheap, but they do feel slightly more hollow than last year's. Which is interesting, because the Pixel 2 is the same mass as the first one, and the 2XL is actually a little heavier than the XL. But in any event, these are now certified water and dust resistant to IP67 standards, which is great, and they've also brought back dual front-firing speakers. Yes! Let's make this a standard across everything. On the flip side, each phone is also missing the 3.5mm headphone jack. I guess it's a good thing Google didn't make a big deal last year about how big a hero it was for keeping that around. Right? If this bugs you and you wind up squeezing your Pixel 2 in a rage, you'll end up discovering another new feature called Active Edge. Apply pressure to the sides of the phone and you summon Google Assistant. If this seems familiar, it is. It's the feature that you either loved, hated, or forgot about on the HTC U11, released this summer. But while this feature works on both the Pixel 2 and the 2XL, it's not as robust as it is on the U11. You can't reassign it to other functions or use it as a shortcut within apps, at least not that I could see. If you don't care about squeezing your phone, You'll be happy to know the fundamentals are here. Near stock Android Oreo with a fingerprint sensor you can use as a trackpad to drop the notification shade. Nice. And responsiveness is as excellent as you'd expect from a device bearing the Pixel brand. Also boasting that brand, the brand new Pixel Book. An utterly ridiculous exercise of engineering excess that I can't help but appreciate. This is not your average Chromebook, which is to say it's not a low-cost laptop. Indeed, it's quite expensive, with a starting price of $999. 
For that, you get a beautifully engineered chassis with a glass window for better Wi-Fi reception, a big, bright 12.3-inch LCD, a comfy keyboard with nice key travel, up to 10 hours of rated battery life, four different positions to use it in because it's got one of those crazy, funky, foldy hinges, an optional $99 pen with its own set of impressive characteristics, and a special Google Now on tap port that lets you circle things and make Chrome tell you about them, a dedicated Google Assistant button, and Chrome OS. Yep, functionally speaking, this is just like one of those low-cost machines you see in classrooms, meant to be secure and simple. And so the price tag is pretty hard to swallow. But it's great for enthusiasts, and I don't get the sense that Google builds these high-end models to sell in volume. It seems more an aspirational exercise, an indulgence in luxury hardware from a predominantly software-focused company. So I'm eager to give this the full review treatment when retail units start landing in early November. Speaking of, let's finish up with availability. The Pixel phones are available for pre-order today, and at press time the Google Store was so loaded down with orders that I had trouble pushing my own through, with delivery estimates ranging from mid-October for the Pixel 2 to mid-November for the 2XL. Want to talk clams? The smaller phone starts at $649, while the XL will run you an extra $200 to start. Verizon is once again the exclusive carrier partner in the US, but you can always buy Unlocked, as uh, T-Mobile was all too happy to remind us this morning. Those prices are roughly in line with last year, and Google has certainly patched a few missing bits with these sequels. So on the whole, I think the phones stand a good chance of outpacing the sales of their predecessors. As for how well they perform once they go from the store shelf to your pocket, though, well, only the full review can tell. Make sure you're subscribed to The Mr. Mobile on YouTube so you don't miss that, and my Pixel Book review coming soon after. And follow me on Facebook at the same name for more up close looks at the new Pixels. Until next time, thanks for watching, and stay mobile, my friends.